All right, welcome to another blog post about learning Drupal 8 through trial and error. In this blog post, I decided to, well, I guess I was inspired by a presentation that David Reed, another fellow Lullabot, did at DrupalCon Austin, where he showed how you could future-proof your Drupal 7 site to make it a lot easier to get to Drupal 8. But the way I'm looking at this is I want to look at all the cool Drupal 8 features that we're getting really, really excited about. A lot of them we've already done blog posts on. But now I'm going to show you how we can get those features and actually have them in Drupal 7. So instead of like future proofing, I'm just showing you how you can have all the hotness of Drupal 8 in your Drupal 7 website. Right now we are looking at a vanilla install of Drupal 8. I have done nothing else besides install this. And then I have a, another website in Drupal 7 where I enabled a lot of the modules not all of them, I would say only about half of them that I discuss in this blog post about how you can get a lot of this functionality in. It not only adds some of the functionality, but a lot of it also makes Drupal 7 look like Drupal 8. So here's Drupal 8, and here's Drupal 7 that I have already with a lot of these modules installed. So as you can see, as I go between the two, there's a lot of similarities. Let's go ahead and, said, and discuss one of the first ones. Here's Drupal 8's new administration toolbar. Here's a module that we're using in Drupal 7 to basically give us the exact same functionality. What's also cool is it's responsive, so if we did make this squishy, we'd also get that same functionality. So as you can see, the menu can go to the other side, everything moves, and this happens on a mobile website as well. So there's Drupal 7 starting to look like Drupal 8. It's one of the things that we're really excited about Drupal 8 is having this new administration toolbar that is responsive. Another thing that you'll notice that we also have is that I installed some stuff inside allowing us to have some of these admin screens actually become views. If you notice in Drupal 7, when we go to content, and we have this right here, this is actually a view now. So in Drupal 7, let's try to see and we get that same functionality, and there is a module that allowed us to have that. So if I go to content, we're getting a lot of the same functionality. Also, with the added Views Bulk Operations module, we get a lot of the stuff that we did in Drupal 8 where we can do a lot more on this page, and we can now start to add and subtract and, and do stuff to make this a more custom page for us because now it is a view. So if we actually go under Structure, Views, notice here that we've got the Administration Views. So now Admin, Content, Comment, Comment Approval, the Content Page, the People Page, these are all now using views and they took over the existing Drupal 7 pages so there's not much you can do. There's modules that we mentioned in this blog post that made this possible. So it's just another cool functionality we're getting in Drupal 7 to make it a lot more like Drupal 8. Another thing that we have is if we go to our Drupal website and we go to content, we have this blocks tab. Drupal 8 doesn't actually function this way but it's given us a lot of the functionality. We're using the bean module that is allowing us to have block types, just like content types. And we did a series uh, on our Drupal 8 series about the new block system, and it discusses how you have the same functionality. So now Drupal 7 has the same functionality as Drupal 8, where we have block types. Blocks are going to be fieldable, and that's all happening with the Bean module. Another thing that we have going on here is under Appearance, we've got a responsive Bartik theme. So now, actually, our default theme of Bartik is responsive. So if you were actually to just use Bartik instead of not your own theme because you just needed a quick website up and running, using Drupal 7, you can now have a responsive theme for Drupal 7 right out of the box. Just another quick thing that you'll notice that we've added to make it like Drupal 8 in Drupal 8. If we are editing content in an administrative, um, we're looking at administrative pages, we have this nice back to site so we can return back to the site since the overlay module was removed from Drupal 8 core. Now in Drupal 7, there's a module that gives us the same functionality. So if we're looking at, let's say, structure, now we have back to site. Another thing that we've also done is if we go to menus, we've added a module that now makes a one link that just says edit menu. Instead of multiple links for edit menu, add menu items, it's all under the edit menu item. So now you can add a link or move the modify the menu itself, enable things. It's not a big thing, but it does make it more like Drupal 8, and it's just a cool little module to help us out there. So another thing that we've done is we made so we can do other things when it comes to having a responsive website. If you notice, if we go under configuration and scroll down, we can now manage breakpoints. So now we have a place to manage our breakpoints. This is actually a bit further than Drupal 8. Drupal 8's management of breakpoints is kind of done so far at the theme level inside the theme files. They have yet to make a UI. We already have that in the Drupal 7 version of the breakpoints module. There is not a UI for it in Drupal 8. So it's kind of cool that we have almost 
better functionality in Drupal 7 than we do in Drupal 8. But again, this is giving us Drupal 8 functionality with breakpoints. Another thing that we've added is if we go to structure, blocks, now we can actually have instances of blocks, which allows us to have multiple blocks in different regions. So we can have the same block in multiple places, which you can do in Drupal 8 with multiple blocks now in Drupal 7. It just kind of gives us some of the same functionality. As you can see, I'm actually getting an error because a lot of these modules we're using, some of them are development versions, but they are being worked on. So again, getting Drupal 8 functionality in Drupal 7. Another thing we can do is if we go to structure and we go to content types, Let's go ahead and just manage fields on our basic page. Now, if we notice, we have other fields that we can do. We have telephone and term reference and email. So we've added fields that become that come with Drupal 8's core into Drupal 7 to give it that same functionality. Just again, really easy stuff, but these are just some of the things that show that Drupal 7 is capable of doing a lot of the new stuff that Drupal 8 does. Let's take a look at another thing. So if we go to content, and on this page, if we were managing our content, another module that's installed is making so that tables are responsive as well, which is part of Drupal 8's core. And what we do is actually, because this is a view, we are able to set what in the table is has priority. So as it starts to become responsive, we start to see that the table will start to squish. And then as we get to certain points, certain fields from the table will start to disappear because we chose which ones are most important. Notice our menu also went responsive. So again, we're just getting a lot of responsive stuff that we didn't have, that we now have, and it was kind of inspired, and a lot of it's coming from backporting of things that we have from Drupal 8. Another thing that we've done, let's go ahead and add some content. Let's just go ahead and add an article. Notice this, now we have the CK editor in place. We actually went ahead and just installed the CK editor because that's more like what's in Drupal 8. Drupal 8 added the CK editor. We're not using the WYSIWYG module, we're using CK editor. So now we have an editor that's in place. Let's go ahead and let's just give this a title. Let's just go ahead and add some dummy text in here. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so now we have our post. Let's Go to our home page. Notice what we also have is in our contextual menu, we now have a quick edit. With the quick edit module, we have inline editing just like Drupal 8. So again, pretty sweet stuff. It works just, I wouldn't say just like Drupal 8, but it's pretty close. And now we can do inline editing. This is also something that was quite taken from and made possible because of the Spark initiative. So that's pretty cool that a lot of that stuff is being ported as well. So, I mean, we're just getting all these things. There's HTML5 in this site now. There's just a lot more stuff making things responsive. We've just added a lot of these modules that I've mentioned in this blog post above that now makes Drupal 7 more like Drupal 8. So from the CK editor to inline editing to responsiveness to a different admin toolbar. Yes, there's a lot of modules to make this happen, but that's the greatest part about Drupal are all the modules. And it's just really cool to see a lot of the stuff that's in Drupal 8 backported to Drupal 7.